and that is to honor what we'd like to think Lorraine High School and Lorraine City Schools is all about, and that is honoring academic excellence. These young people honored this evening have at least earned honor roll status three of five honor roll periods. We're finishing the sixth, so we really can't predict that. But because they have earned that status, you can also assume that they were probably in very much the same uh, picture in their freshman, sophomore, and junior year. So it is those folks that we want to recognize and honor this evening. That's what the program is all about. And I have uh, some people that I would like to introduce uh, that would like to be part of honoring you fine young people along with your parents. Representing our professional staff and Board of Education, and I'd ask those folks as I call your name to please stand and remain standing. And if you would hold your applause until all of these folks that I introduce are standing, I would appreciate it. Ms. Reed, Assistant Principal at Lorraine High School. Mrs. Wargo, teacher at Lorraine High School. Mrs. Fisher, teacher at Lorraine High School. Mrs. Solomon, teacher at Lorraine High School. Mr. Gonis, teacher at Lorraine High School. Mr. Folk, teacher at Lorraine High School. Mr. Sinegar, member of the Board of Education. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson is a member of the Board of Education. And the newest member of the Board of Education, Mr. Kirchner. Let's give those folks a nice round of applause. Back at a table that I just now found him in the room, Mr. Kingsley, Assistant Principal at Lorraine High School. Please stand. At the table, at the front, we are pleased to have at this end of the table a representative of a very fine company in town, the company that is our partner in education, Lorraine National Bank. And Mary Ann Kosak is representing Lorraine National Bank. Won't you please stand? Give her an individual round of applause. You didn't have to pay for your uh, son or daughter's dinner because Lorraine National Bank took care of that. I'd also like to introduce the rest of the members of the front table before we get started. Dr. Judy Duchesne, Mr. Thomas Bolin, Mrs. Cindy Kramer, Mr. Ken Kramer. Across here, our guidance counselor, Mr. Roger Brownson, Mr. Wayne Hardman, Mrs. Jane Hume, and Mrs. Gloria Nolan. Let's give those folks a nice round of applause, please. All of our guidance counselors work hard to uh, take care of the special details that have to be prepared for this banquet, but we owe a special thanks to Mrs. Gloria Nolan because this is under her area this year and she's done a very fine job. I'd like to give you, at lead you in a round of applause for her also. And now for our invocation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Priscilla Morales, and tonight I'm in charge of the invocation. First of all, I would like everyone that they would please bow their heads, and we'll do a prayer to begin. Heavenly Father, which are in heaven, we come before thy presence tonight to thank you for the opportunity you have granted us to be together in order to honor these outstanding students of Lorraine High School. You are the one who's given us the strength and the power to keep up with our studies. And now we are being awarded tonight for this effort. We ask you to continue blessing us with our future and for you to guide each and every step we make. We would also like to ask you, Lord, to bless the food for which we will be receiving tonight. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, our program is now officially underway and blessed. Let's uh, ask the Coraliers to come forward. However, we do have just two representatives of the Coraliers, and they are going to uh, sing a duet for us this evening. I'd like to introduce Aaron Bouton and Maureen Downey.
Thank you, Aaron and Maureen. That was beautiful. That's a tough assignment, folks, and that's, uh, that just shows you the caliber of student that we have here. We are now ready to move to the dinner of the program, and then following dinner, we will uh, start with the rest of the program that you see before you. Yes, sir. that you did not get a C on your report card. I did not take the time, because I don't think I had the time, to count the number of A's and B's that are represented in this room tonight. But I have to tell you, this class, the size of this group is not a surprise. When I first came to Lorraine, I met with this group of students as they were sophomores, and we were talking about developing some courses that had not been offered at Lorraine High School before. We had a large group of students from which we could pick for the program. And they were given every opportunity to take advantage of that. And we've been watching this class go through Lorraine High School. And I know that I speak for the entire faculty when I say we are extremely proud of each and every one, and especially the students here tonight. They are an exceptional group. They will go out and represent Lorraine well at their colleges, their place of work, whatever their choice may be for the future, they will represent Lorraine High School and the city of Lorraine very well. You can be proud of your own child, but you can be proud of the entire group. They have friends, they have a peer group that is strong. And I think you're going to hear a lot from this class in the future, the class of 1991. So without any further comments, I'd like to bring some people up who would also like to say a few words about these fine young people. At first, if you refer to your program, you'll see that Dr. Duchesne is the next speaker. Dr. Duchesne comes to Lorraine from Coldwater, Michigan. She was a curriculum coordinator in that district. As executive director here in Lorraine City Schools, she is responsible for curriculum and curriculum development program evaluation, and staff training. She has much experience in these areas, and she is especially strong in competency-based education, middle school programs, substance abuse programs, counseling, grant writing, and environmental education. She has experience at the high school level as a teacher. She has experience at Western Michigan University as a part-time faculty person, and uh, comes well prepared to serve the City of Lorraine, Dr. Duchesne. Thank you, Mr. Sink. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a special congratulations to our young people and their parents, because I know that you don't get to the place that you are tonight alone. It takes a lot of cooperation and work and dedication and plain old hard studying to be here with mo all, almost all A's and some B's. So congratulations to all of you. We're proud of you. I was scanning some reading material trying to think of what I could say tonight and as I did that you know, I was struck by all the negativity and the bad news that there seems to be around and I know your class has certainly uh, experienced a lot of that. And I was trying to think of something that I might say to you that would help uplift you and, and maybe get you through some of these tough times and help you as you move on to establish yourselves in your niche in life. The world today is quite different. You're different students and you have a difficult world and a challenge before you. I guess the best thing I can say to you is believe in yourself. Build on your strengths, of which there are many, or you wouldn't be here tonight. And shore up your weaknesses, as we all have them. The good news is, opportunities abound for this class, 
And at a similar function a few weeks ago, I heard Dr. Roy Church from Lorraine Community College speaking and saying that the good news is you are part of what they call the baby busters. You know the baby boomers who are now getting to middle age. Well, this group is one of the smallest numbers of groups since World War II coming through to prepare for the workforce. So that means that there are a lot of options for the young people in this room tonight. However, most of those options, for those of you who are ready to throw the hats high in the air and say, oh, wonderful, here's graduation, most of those options, fully 55% in Lorraine County, are going to require education beyond high school. So we hope that you're looking at how and why and what kinds of additional learning that you will become involved in. I think many of the adults in this room are aware that the way that the workplace is changing these days, you don't just get an education and you're through with it. Learning is a lifelong experience. And so as I was thinking about that, I, I was, it brought to mind a little book that I read that I want to share uh, a few incidences with you. It's called The Three Boxes of Life, and it's by a man named Richard Bowles. And some of your counselors or teachers may have mentioned uh, What Color Is Your Parachute, which is a life work planning book that was written by the same author. And he talks about the three boxes of life and how you're in the first box, which is learning, the school box. And we stay in that school box for 12, 14, 16 years, and some more for some of us, like some of us at this table up here. And then after that, you move into the work box. And you stay in the work box for maybe 20, 30, 40 years until you get to go to the third box, the retirement, the leisure box. Wow, we made it. Now it's time to sit back and fish and golf and garden and all those things, travel that you've always wanted to do. And Bull said, well, that, that might not be the way to go. And then he says, well, some people compartmentalize their life through the week like that. And I think some of you may be able to identify with that. You have the 7.45 a.m. to 2.20 school part, right? We go to school and we learn. And then maybe two or three nights of the week or a Saturday for part of the day, you're in a work box where you go out and earn some money so that you can get the nice clothes that you're wearing tonight and maybe uh, support a car or some of those other kinds of habits that young people uh, occasionally have these days. And then, wow, Friday and Saturday night is leisure and let's go out and have a good time and get to do those things that we've been waiting for all week. Well, Bull says, this is not the way to go, folks. He said we should be balancing these things and doing them all together, as in learning at work and maybe enjoying while you learn so that you have some enjoyment built into your learning situations. Again, it comes back to looking at your strengths. You see the, the young people up here singing. If that's a joy that they have, get joy in your life from the things that bring you that joy. Learn from what you're doing, whether it's the work or the school. And another authority that I've heard is a uh, Hannah McCarty, Dr. Hannah McCarty from Cleveland State, talks about plurking. Maybe this is a bad time to say this, Mr. Sink and Mr. King's lips read the, uh, but playing while you're working. I mean, to, to begin to get enjoyment and to produce that balance in all of your daily activities. So I guess as we go through some tough times and some transitions, a lot of you are gonna be changing the way that you live as you leave Lorraine High. You're going to be meeting new challenges. Remember that balance and remember those strengths that you have and those joys that you can build on and meld together so that your life can truly be enjoyable. We're very proud of you all, and I know that some other folks have got some things to say, so we'll give the mic back to Mr. Sink, and thank you so much for the good work that you do. We're glad that you're representing the Rain City Schools. Thank you very much, Dr. Duchesne. Many of you have uh, perhaps the album at home, Born in the USA. Well, we have a gentleman that was not only born in the USA, but for since the age of three has been in Lorraine, and he lives, breathes, walks, talks, eats, drinks Lorraine. Mr. Ken Kramer is our next speaker. 
And if there was ever a more lo loyal Lorraine person, I have not met that person yet. It's a pleasure to work with Ken as he is the president of the Board of Education. Mr. Kramer. Thanks, Paul. That's the nicest thing anybody said in a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. First of all, I would like to thank all the parents, the students who make this evening possible. You are the ones who put in the hard work and the long hours. I congratulate all of you for finishing what you have started. Our school system is going through some challenging times, but being here tonight makes me feel good. It reminds me that good things will always continue in Lorraine City School. And I'll say it again. We will still have good times in Lorraine City School. We will always have students who are learning and achieving. We will always have parents who care about doing the best for their children. We will always know we are going or giving our children an excellent education. We are pleased as the Board of Education to recognize the achievement of all of you here tonight. Good luck and God bless all of you in the future. Thank you, Ken. Our next speaker, we are very pleased and proud that he has taken the time out of his busy schedule to be here tonight. I would imagine if you would follow Mr. Bolin around just maybe a week, you would be very, very tired. You would be looking for a little bit of relaxation, and I hope that he is balancing his life with some relaxation, as recommended by Dr. Duchesne. Mr. Boland comes to us from a varied experience as an administrator and teacher in Toledo City Schools. Just to list, to go backwards in his career path is the word that we're using now. He was the assistant superintendent for curriculum and administrative personnel. He was assistant superintendent for personnel. He was executive director for personnel. He was executive director for elementary education. He was a supervising principal. He was an elementary principal, he was an assistant elementary principal, and he was, most importantly, a teacher at DeVilbus High School. I think that's a real good career path for a person who's going to lead the educational institution in the city of Lorraine. You obviously heard that he has experience throughout. He understands theory, he understands philosophy, most importantly, he understands youth. Mr. Boland. Thanks, Mr. Sink. It's really a pleasure to be here, uh, not just because of the students, but also because of the parents. To the students, I want to say that part of the credit for your success can be given to you, and part of the credit is because of your excellent choice of parents. I must say, it's not always easy having children or getting along with parents. You know, the, the advice uh, that's currently given is enjoy your kids while they're young and still on your side. After their young daughter had retired for the night, the wife of a friend of mine interrupted her husband as he sat reading his newspaper and honey she said to him today I had a very frank discussion with our daughter concerning the facts of life really said the father he leaned forward and whispered in a conspiratorial tone and what did you learn <laughs> 12 year old 12 year old Bob brought home his report card and his father hit the roof what's the meaning of this the father explained uh, do you realize that when George Washington was your age he had already become a surveyor and was out working and earning a living? Yeah, young Bob mumbled under his breath, and he was, when he was your age, he was president. <laughs> Someone once said that children are a message we send into a future that we cannot see. Obviously, for you parents and friends, your messages have come through very well the last 13 years. Recently, Peter Zanton, a nationally known strategic planner, was in town, and I had an opportunity to talk with him. Zanton was one of the fellows and really the brainchild guy behind the redevelopment and, and renaissance of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, if you've been to Baltimore, you know about Harbor Place and, more importantly, about the whole renaissance of the entire downtown. That was all Zanton's idea. But the guy is a, is a modern thinker. I think he could work for one of those think tank organizations. He shared with me a booklet he's written that looks at how early experiences with children, even prenatal ones, 
affect how kids learn. The information was really fascinating, and he says as an infant, you can predict just how successful the child will be in school just by observing the infant. Did the parents pick the child up when the little arms were reached out to be handled? And did the child then learn that the world is a safe place in which to adventure? Was the child's early exploration rewarded by giving them confidence and growth? Well, I know that kids that are successful in school had that kind of early nurturing environment because we see so many young people who come to us without that kind of a nurturing environment and who really do have difficulty, who are afraid to adventure, who are afraid to test, who are afraid to take risks because they're not so sure the world's a friendly place. They're not so sure it's a place where they can take risks and even make mistakes and still ultimately succeed. As parents, it's really difficult to know sometimes if we've made the kind of differences we ought to make for our children. I think most of you can be assured tonight that you've done something very, very right. Your children's success is obvious. I'd also like to congratulate you young people. Your parents and teachers can open a door, but you had to take the challenge and walk through. The future holds many doors open for you, and I urge you to walk through as many of them as you can. The world is a safe place to take some chances. Life's an adventure, and you're the explorers. One of the best things about an event like this banquet is that it gives you a chance to look at all you've accomplished. But it also gives you the impetus to go forward. Robert Browning once wrote, remember him, senior English? Hope, some of you? A man's reach should exceed his grasp, or else what's a heaven for? There are wondrous things just waiting for you beyond your current grasp, and I really wish you the best of luck in reaching out for them. On behalf of the students and parents, I'd like to thank the speakers for their message this evening. The words, uh, challenging words are always something to listen to and abide by. We are now ready to move to the next stage of our program, and I'll ask the guidance counselors to get into their positions and ask our honored speakers to take their positions. As I call the name, let's give every student a round of applause. When the applause has finished, I will call the next name. Reed Barnes. Aaron Balton. Maureen Downey. Michael Engel. Andrea Kaiser. Larry Schur. Bridget Summers. Anthony Strauser. Ted Trout. Now we will start back at the front of the program. Cindy Allen, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Donald Allen. Abigail Aquila, daughter of Carol Stevens and Paul Aquila. Tammy Babix, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Babix. Dara Bennett, daughter of Dale Bennett. Patricia Blaby, daughter of Deborah Blaby.
Michael Bowles, son of Mr. and Mrs. John Bowles. Christopher Bolius, son of Steve and Patricia Bolius. <laughs> Carrie Brannan, daughter of Ed and Phyllis Brannan. <laughs> Barbara Brewer, daughter of Mike and Carol Brewer. <laughs> Devon Bird, daughter of Henry and Peggy Bird. Kevin Chapin, son of Barbara Chapin. Chris Chiaffi, son of Don and Jean Joy. Jennifer Crawford, daughter of Hayden Mar and Marcia Crawford. Jennifer Dalzell, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Lowell Dalzell. Heather Dean, daughter of Roger and Wanda Dean. <laughs> Frances Diekler, daughter of Elise Diekler. <laughs> Rhonda Eitner, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Eitner. <laughs> Hadidal Fernandez, daughter of Antonio and Edia Fernandez. Michelle Frankowitz, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Paul Frankowitz. Erin Gladding, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Gladding. Christina Gutierrez, daughter of Carmen Gutierrez. Jody Hellinger, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Alvin Hellinger. <laughs> Melinda Hernandez, daughter of Ruth Hernandez. <laughs> Rob Judd, son of Patrick and Patricia Judge. <laughs> Michelle Kovacs, daughter of Steve and Jane Kovacs. Christopher Kuhar, son of William and Nancy Kuhar. <laughs> Kyle Lathwell, daughter of Randy and Kathy Lathwell. <laughs> Heidi Lamasters, daughter of Ray and Judy Lamasters. Beth Marciniak, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Greg Marciniak. <laughs> Leslie Maynard, daughter of Laura Maynard. <laughs> I'd like to make special note, Leslie has perfect attendance for all four years at Lorraine High School. Nicole McDaniel, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Gordon McDaniel. <laughs> Stephanie Minnick, daughter of Mary Lou Minnick and Mike Minnick. <laughs> Priscilla Morales, daughter of Angel and Minerva Morales. <laughs> Melanie Nissenbaum. Pardon me, Melanie Nissenbaum, daughter of Linda Nissenbaum. <laughs> Marjean Perhot, daughter of Mrs. Donna Perhot. <laughs> Randall Plot. <laughs> Michelle Patarella. Daughter of Ken and Judy Pottarella. Yes. 
Tanya Prescott, daughter of Regina and Brian Pyrda. Michael Puckett, son of Paula and James Puckett. Alicia Ramos, daughter of Domingo Ramos. Tracy Rich, daughter of Ken and Catherine Rich. Dan Rivera, son of Ramon and Martha Rivera. Tanya Rodriguez, daughter of Roseanne, Roxana Pravlik. Kim Ruth, daughter of Rich and Fran Ruth. Lisa Salisbury. Maria Sanquez, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Efrain Sanquez. Michelle Shreve. Persis Sosiak, daughter of Michael and Persis E. Sosiak. I'd like to make special mention that Currently, and I predict through the end of the year, Persis is number one in the class of 1991. Brent Stowe, son of John and Lucy Stowe. Richard Stever, son of Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Stever. Michelle Strickler, daughter of Gary and Nancy Strickler. <laughs> Nakisha Taylor, daughter of Russell and Deborah Bird. <laughs> Jennifer Tillack, daughter of Joyce and Timothy Tillack. <laughs> Dietrich Villarreal, Daughter of Martha Reiser and Jeff Villarreal. <laughs> Brian Warner, son of Mr. and Mrs. James Bubinski and Mr. and Mrs. Daryl Warner. <laughs> now, to the best of my knowledge, thank you, Brian. To the best of my knowledge, I have called all of the names of the students in attendance this evening. I'm holding my breath, hoping that that is true. Anyone whose name has not been called that should have been? Okay. As I mentioned, thank you. You may have your seats. Thank you, guidance counselors. There's just one other thing before I uh, return the program to Priscilla for the benediction. There's one other thing that I would like to do, which is kind of a little tradition we've started here at, uh, at Lorraine High School for this banquet, and it's only three years old. A couple years ago, we were given a large box of collectible items. So we decided what we would do with those items is each year give one of those items to the person who is number one in the class as a collectible, as a remembrance of this banquet. So, Persis, would you please come to the front table, please? It is uh, noteworthy to say that not only is Persis the uh, number one in academic standing in our class, but Persis has a four point on a four point scale. Yes. She has never experienced a B. Can you believe that? So that's a superhuman effort, and for that superhuman effort, we'd like to give you this bag, this collector's bag of Superman pretzels, purses. <laughs> and you're not allowed to eat those. 
save them. Priscilla? <laughs> Once more, I ask you all to bow your heads with me, please, so we can do a prayer before leaving. Heavenly Father, once more we come before your presence, Lord, in order to depart from this banquet, Father. Everyone has had an opportunity to nourish their bodies, and we've had the opportunity to relax and have a good time. But now it's time for us all to go to our distinct homes, and we ask you to go with each and every one of us, and to keep us safe. May you provide us with rest tonight in order to face tomorrow and everything that we bring. We thank you, Lord, once more. Amen.